All right, so last week on the show, we had a discussion about recruiting, and it was not a good one. It was about four-star cornerback Kai Bates, who decommitted from LSU football after being committed for about a month, and obviously that position has been a bit of a struggle this year for the Tigers. But today we got good news, because this morning, waking up, five-star quarterback Bryce Underwood predicted to become an LSU Tiger. If you don't know that name, five-star quarterback, number one in the 2025 cycle. They've been after this kid for a long time. He comes from Michigan, my kind of stomping grounds nearby where I grew up, for one of the powerhouse high schools in Michigan, Belleville High School there. This would be a huge get for LSU football. He plays the exact same way that Jaden Daniels does. And we all know what Jaden Daniels is doing right now. He's lighting up the record books, lighting up the scoreboard, putting up 40 and 50 points a week like it's nobody's business. LSU is really going to miss him. He's going to be a first-round pick. And unfortunately, they kind of wasted his talent because the defense was not good. But I digress. You get a second chance to make good on that if you can bring in Underwood, finish the deal there, get him to sign on the dotted line, and actually come to campus and play a little bit. And if you could have a better defense with Bryce Underwood, this is a quarterback that can take you to a national championship. Obviously, being the five-star number one quarterback prospect who literally every college around the United States of America wants, and if there were colleges overseas in England and France, whatever, they would want him too if they played college football. Maybe they do. I'm not too sure. Point is, everybody wants this kid, and this is a program-changing commitment if you get the job done. What happens when a five-star quarterback commits to a school? There's a domino effect. Everybody then wants to go and play with him. I use Michigan as an example a lot because I grew up as a Michigan fan. I'm going to do it again, but I promise you there's a point to it. J.J. McCarthy, former five-star quarterback, Michigan starting quarterback right now. Michigan had terrible quarterback play for years. And they finally got a kid with the pedigree and the talent to change that narrative and take this team over the hump. And what happened? They had five-star receivers commit. They had high four-star skill position players commit. Everybody wanted to be a part of a special class with that quarterback. And it might differ from one school to the other, but change the narrative of the school. The same point stands everywhere else. If you get a five-star quarterback, quarterback is the most important position on the football field. That's the leader of your team. At least it should be if you're a good football team. So if you get him on the board early, committed, it's like a magnet. He'll attract all the other good players, and they'll want to form this nucleus, which is a good football team, a team that can win championships, win a lot of football games, and really be a team, be an era to be remembered. And if you get Bryce Underwood committed to your football team, He's in the 2025 class. That would be about a year before signing day, way in advance, giving people plenty of time to hop on the train. That would be massive. Right now, your biggest competition, it seems like, is Michigan. It's an LSU-Michigan battle. And the Wolverines just picked up a commitment recently from a four-star quarterback from Fort Myers, Florida, who's a really solid player. They do want to bring in two quarterbacks, though. Bryce Underwood, they hope, and the other kid that's already committed. LSU... Let's think about the quarterback situation moving forward. So Daniels, I don't even know if he has any eligibility left, but he's gone. I saw something on Twitter today where NFL scouts are already saying he's going to be a top 20 pick right now, which is incredible and really good for him. He's done a great job to boost his draft stock this year. But he's as good as gone, which is good for him because he has nothing left to prove minus winning an SEC and a national championship, but you're not going to risk millions of dollars to do that, when you literally have accomplished all you can in college from a player, statistic, talent standpoint, in my opinion. So who's left? Garrett Nussmeyer, who a lot of you out there like. He's unproven, though. He played in one game, really, in the SEC title when Daniels got hurt. And sure, he played well. He was slinging it. And he should get a shot to be the starter next year. Absolutely. But think about what LSU did this year offensively with a dual-threat quarterback, right? I just don't think that Garrett Nussmeyer can produce, can lead this offense in the same way that Jaden Daniels has. Think of plays where it's third down and the pass isn't there, and Daniels somehow, some way, like Houdini, gets out of the pocket, evades six tacklers, and gets 60 yards, for example. He did that time and time again. That is why this offense is so good. Because you can try everything you want. You could have the perfect 
game plan to stop a passing play, whatever. But at the end of the day, this is football, and whoever's got the ball can make a play with it, and that's what Daniels does. You could perfectly cover a passing play, and he still lights you up for 50 yards because at the end of the day, football's played on grass, and if a pass isn't there, you can make like the 1920s take off and run. And if you're the fastest player on the field, you're not going to apologize for that, and that's what Daniels is. Nussmeyer, I don't see making the same kind of play. Sure, he might be able to scramble and get you 10 yards, but is he going to make a game-changing run play on a, on, in a situation where, as a very um, pocket passery esque quarterback, work with me here, he's not a dual-threat guy. So on a play where he wants to make a pass and the pass isn't there, is he going to force it into a window and throw a pick? Can he use his athleticism to get out of the pocket and make something out of nothing? I'm not so sure. I know Jaden Daniels can. I know Bryce Underwood can. The point here is Daniels is special. Who's your next special quarterback? Personally, I don't think it's Garrett Nussmeyer. He has a chance, certainly should have a chance to prove that he is. There's also Ricky Collins, who came from Woodlawn High School. Jury's still out. Super young, super raw. They didn't think they got Colin Hurley committed in this 24 class. Low four stars, something like that. But look, Bryce Underwood is a generational talent. I don't know what it is about Michigan lately, but they've just produced five-star quarterback after five-star quarterback. Dante Moore last year at UCLA. Now Bryce Underwood coming out of Belleville in a couple of years here. And that is a guy you need to have to really provide optimism for the future at that quarterback position. Show fans that, hey, what LSU did this year, it can do again with a, a quarterback of a similar skill set all they got to do is get the pieces around him. And when you got a quarterback like that, that's as talented as that, getting those pieces around him should not be that difficult. So, look, a national recruiting analyst has predicted Bryce Underwood to LSU. It was a medium prediction, 6 out of 10, confidence. And what? It's November. We're still a year from signing day. But this is the type of guy, based on everything that I've read, if you get him committed, he's going to stay committed. So get Bryce Underwood on the board, and the future of LSU football is looking very, very bright. All right, let's talk LSU women's basketball because the situation with the team right now is a little interesting, and really it kind of came out of nowhere. I was at the game against Queens a couple weeks ago. It felt like an eternity ago, and the team played well. Angel Reese was on the floor. She was putting up points, even against Mississippi Valley State too, putting up points like nobody's business, playing with a chip on her shoulder. The team was really gelling and, and molding, and then – Throughout the week, you hear rumblings about things going on that maybe happened during the Kent State game. I don't want to speculate. I don't know anything, uh, you know, that's confirmed. Not many do. And Kim Mulkey, you know, has played it very close to the vest, as she's allowed to do. I mean, there was an explanation yesterday. Sometimes the media, us, wants to know more than we're allowed to know. And, of course, we'd love to know everything. If there's somebody not playing, like an All-American, who just led this team to a title, you know, we want to know why. But the coach has the right to, you know, keep that in-house if need be. And we don't really need to know everything. And that's, that's understandable. Do we want to know? Yes. Do we need to know? No, that's up to them. And they can share as much or as little as they'd like. And, you know, she compared it to a parent disciplining a child. You're going to tell all your friends that you, you discipline your kid? You know, maybe not. Maybe you will. But just something to think about. Way to humanize the situation. But with everything going on right now, you wouldn't think anything's happening because LSU has played very well as a team. Watching them in warm-ups, they're focused, tunnel vision on the game. During the game, they're not fighting, they're not yapping. They're just playing as a team, playing great defense, passing the ball well on offense. It's great team basketball. Not to mention there's opportunities for individual highlight plays like Flage Johnson and Haley Van Lith and other players, Michaela uh, Williams, just making plays, making shots, creating offense for themselves. And that's why I think this team is going to be so good. And I, 
understand, disclaimer, they haven't played anybody good on paper since Colorado, a game that they lost. And I'll get into that game in a second. But still, you come out, you're putting up huge offensive numbers. You're going to a sellout, 7,500 crowd environment in southeastern Louisiana there. And putting the game away early, it seemed like. And with a young team, with a lot of transfers, people that haven't played a ton of basketball with each other, that was very impressive. And you know what? With this whole situation going on, I think this team is going to be just fine. There is so much talent, so much depth, and I've been really blown away with the maturity of this team, of Coach Mulkey and the players, while this has all been happening. During the game, Coach Mulkey, just watch her on the sideline for two minutes. She's so locked in and focused on the game, encouraging her players, coaching up her players. Sure, she might you know, have a pointer for a player here and there, and with how loud it is in the arena, you got to like scream it and yell it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all tough love, coach to player. And I don't know, I feel like in the past I've seen situations like this happen on other teams, and you can just tell, you know, it's getting to the players, it's getting to the coaches. Obviously something is on their minds and, and affecting the way they're playing. It would have been very easy last Friday to go to Hammond America, having this media kind of circus going on, and lay an egg or not play well walk out of there again with a close win against the team you are much better than but that wasn't the case they dominated in the second half walked out of there with a blowout win people were walking out of the tunnels there in the third quarter for a game that had been sold out for a year so that was very impressive to me and you know yesterday monday they take care of texas southern with ease the point is this is a great basketball team and it just needs a little bit of time basketball is a long season, November to March. That's how long the season spans. LSU will not be the same team it is now as it will be in February and in March. It's the same with football. The Tigers are not, well, the defense was, but the Tigers, at least offensively, are not the same team they were against Florida State that they will be this weekend against Texas A&M. That's, that's just how it works. You get better. In some cases, you get better. In some cases, you might get a little bit worse. That's just how the season goes. There will be injuries. There will be fatigue. There will be lessons learned, people that mature, people that struggle, right? I just don't see this team folding and collapsing. There are too many talented players on this squad, and just getting the sense of togetherness they've had, sitting literally five feet away from them as they play, gives me a lot of confidence, right? As I said, the teamwork is excellent on defense. They're sliding. They're forcing travels. They're just locking down. They're helping out each other with rebounds. They're passing it well then on the offensive end. One-touch passes, quick passes, setting up threes. And then not to mention you got different players that can create their own shot, which in basketball is of the utmost importance. So, look, this is a great team. Yep, they lost to Colorado. Watching that game, I think it was obvious the lack of effort jumped off the page. The lack of chemistry jumped off the page. And that's going to happen when you have new players transferring in that don't know each other very well, that haven't played a ton of ball with each other very well. And you can practice as much as you want, scrimmage as much as you want. But there's a difference between that and actually playing in a basketball game, not to mention against the team in Colorado that probably will be top 15 all season, went to the Sweet 16 last year, and Coach Mulkey told us this was coming. Like, she knew it was coming. This team is getting us at the right time, she said. And they certainly did, and it certainly looked like it. But I applaud LSU for challenging itself and playing a tough game like that literally in the first game of the season rather than, you know, play a cupcake. Now, I know they played some exhibitions, but come on. I mean, they're exhibitions for a reason. You play lesser competition. They came out and challenged themselves. And I think when we look back on that game a couple months from now, it's going to be a benefit more than it is a detriment because LSU had a chance to see what the deficiencies were, see where they're lacking, see that, hey, we got to pick it up. We got to run hard up and down the floor. We can't take any plays off. They took a lot of plays off in that game, but I think it was a great opportunity to unrip that Band-Aid and see what the issues might be this year with this team. There's the obvious narrative, oh, they won the title. Now they're all high and mighty. They think they can win and just walk into an arena and win a game with C effort. And maybe that's what they were thinking in this Colorado game. But I guarantee you that will not happen very often again this season, if at all. At least since that game, this team has not felt or looked like that. Instead of being the hunted, 
They felt like the Hunters again. And I'm looking forward to the next time they play a tough team and have a chance to prove themselves because I think LSU is going to come out firing on all cylinders. So, look, they've done a great job handling this Angel Reese situation. Coach Mulkey says she's still a part of the team. Let's see how this all shakes out moving forward. Be sure to like and subscribe.